Hi folks, if you're new to this channel, my name is Jacob and I'm a certified RV technician. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering some of the many, many questions that people have left in the comment section on my previous videos. So this viewer is asking, here's my question, what brand of RV do you own? When my wife and I got married, we went and bought our first RV. It was a 1999 model Harney Coachworks Renegade, which no one's heard of Harney Coachworks because it was an upstart company that started making a very good RV and undercutting the competition on price. And after three years, Monaco didn't like that, so they bought the whole company, and it began to be produced as the Monaco Safari. This is unfortunately a common story in the RV industry, where you have some really great company that's making a quality product. They get bought out by one of the big conglomerates, and then in the future, the quality starts to decline because the big manufacturers often are trying to cut as many corners as they can to make the most profit possible. So the other RV I've just purchased recently for my son. What brand of camper did I buy? Well, in fact, it is a Fisher Price RV. And I would say the build quality on this is comparable to most RVs currently on the market today. Sun comes up, we start our day. This viewer is asking, what are your thoughts on lifetime roof? I'm talking about the kind you take to someone and they spray it on your roof like a bed liner. This and the RV Armor roof system are good products in the sense that they're very durable, but I don't like them because I can't make a repair effectively using their system. I need to replace a skylight or some other fixture. I have to waterproof it somehow, but I don't have access to RV Armor products. Those come through dealers only. This viewer is asking, if I wanted to purchase an RV for myself to live in at a park, can you recommend any particular brand that is well-made? I would say if you're planning on having something stationary and not traveling, what you really want is a park model RV, not a standard RV. Park model RVs, the square footage is small enough that they are classified as RVs, but they're really built like a house. So the maintenance on them is much less. They're more energy efficient and they're more durable, last longer, so if you're not traveling, that's definitely the way to go. Here's a question. What do you like to use on the wipe seals? If you go to my website on the recommended products page, there is a Starbright brand spray on conditioner and UV protectant for slide out seals. So here's an interesting question. This viewer says, I've heard you can fix a soft floor with drilling holes through the top layer and injecting epoxy between the layers every so many inches apart in the soft spots, and that will take care of a soft floor. Is this true? And if it's true, what kind of epoxy do I use? Epoxy injected into a floor is not a repair method I would recommend. While epoxy is pretty durable, the places where it joins wood is not going to make a good solid weight bearing structure. You really would be better having the floor replaced with actual decking. Here's a great question. Is it better to buy a used fifth wheel, say a year or two years old? Would that solve some of the issues? When you buy a new RV, it's commonly referred to as the shakedown period where you go on your first few trips and you find out what works and what doesn't work. And so if you're buying a camper that's a year or two years old, it's common, not always true, but it's common that you do get an RV with less issues. If you're shopping for a used RV, be sure to check out my video with tips for buying a used camper. This question is, what about roof coatings? One is claiming no maintenance when coated. Absolutely false. If you have an EPDM rubber roof membrane and the top layer starts to wear off, a roof coating can help extend the life of that rubber roof membrane and prevent you from having to get the whole thing replaced. But I have seen many situations where people try to use a rolled on coating as a way of fixing leaks around fixtures, and that usually does not work. Even if you have a rolled on roof coating, you still need to be resealing around each fixture using a rubber roof type caulking like Dicor every year to make sure you don't have leaks. Do you do complete solar installs? Yes. Thinking of 600 watts on the roof, 200 watt portable, MPPT, Victron 3000 Multi Plus, three 200 amp hour lithium batteries, oversized wire, multiple fuses and shutoffs, positive and negative bus bars. The thing about a list of components like that is it really doesn't tell me anything about how you intend to use the system. They really need to start with a list of requirements of what they want their solar system to accomplish. Appliances, 
how many hours a day they're going to be using them. And then after you figure out usage, then you can buy equipment that will actually serve what you need and have something you're happy with and not run the risk of over buying. This viewer is asking how many miles can you go before you should regrease? Dexter, who manufactures trailer axles for RVs, they recommend having your wheel bearings repacked every 12 months or 12,000 miles, whichever comes first. So even if you have a very low, low mileage trailer, if it has been more than 12 months since you've had the bearing serviced, you should have that done before you head on on your next trip to avoid wheel bearing failure. If you're buying a used toy hauler, what do you look for in the suspension to make sure it can haul a toy? Oh my gosh, I hear so many horror stories about this. One of my viewers just left a comment saying that they saw a guy with a toy hauler hauling his motorcycle in the back of the pickup truck because the suspension on his toy hauler wasn't beefy enough to even hold his motorcycle. Overkill is always better. If you have a double or triple axle toy hauler, I would expect no less than 7K rated axles on there to make sure you don't have failure from loading it. If you see 6K or 5,200 pound axles on a toy hauler, you need to be checking very closely. Now, how do you know what the axle weight rating actually is? The VIN tag should say what the gross axle weight rating is, or GAWR. I'm probably gonna have to make a whole video explaining how to figure out the actual weight capacity of a fifth wheel and how to properly weigh an RV to see what actual load you're putting on it after you put your toys in. So if you want to see a video tutorial on that, please leave a comment below. Second question, I have a relatively new RV and we're shocked to find real cheap plumbing fittings. Can RV fittings be upgraded? Sometimes. Some of them you can switch. It's annoying with faucets because the connections are different than a standard household faucet. If you're going to install a residential household type faucet, then you have to adapt the plumbing connections. I have done it, it's not the easiest, but really most of the problems I see come from a lack of proper winterization on campers. If you winterize properly, you should get years and years of service out of the factory plumbing fittings. This viewer is asking, is this channel going to actually show work being done or is it just going to be jawboning about it? My goal with this channel is not actually to teach you how to be an RV mechanic. My goal is to teach you how to stay out of the shop, which is why all my social media handles are how to not break your RV. That's my goal with this channel, is to help you be educated to save yourself a lot of time, money, and headache and get the most out of your camper. So yes, lots of jawboning. Oh man, is it safer to buy a rental RV? Lord no, oh my gosh. Part of the challenge with running an RV rental business is that when you have it booked week to week to week, something is gonna come back broken and you don't have time to get it fixed properly before it goes out again. I see so many rental RVs that run into some sort of catastrophic failure because of a lack of maintenance because it's so hard to get things serviced quickly. So if you're shopping used RVs, I would say really don't buy one that has previously been a full-time rental because that's a hard life for an RV. This question, newbies here, we bought a brand new Highland Ridge Silver Star fifth wheel. My biggest frustration is the lack of useful documentation. Owner's manual is poorly written and their website says they don't make service manuals and wiring diagrams available for users. Of course, I understand why, but the idea of being stranded without documentation for our rig is nuts. We'd also like to make some mods. Is there a repository or some other source for such documentation? No, there isn't. With RVs, you have a collection of appliances and you can find service manuals for each of those individual appliances. But when it comes to how they put everything together, it's a hot mess, folks. I can't tell you how many times I just have to go on a wild goose chase. One time I was looking for the power converter on a fifth wheel and I found it after a long search under the bathroom sink. It was just not intuitive the way they put things together. The wiring for all these components and the plumbing systems are just chaotic. And so part of the challenge for me as an RV technician is I literally have to just figure it out on the fly every single time because Every RV, even within the same manufacturer, there's just like so many different ways that they do it. So is there documentation? No, it wouldn't make sense for the manufacturers to try and do that because they don't even have standard ways of doing it themselves. Yeah, it's a hot mess.
Can you do a video on which manufacturers are quality we want to buy in six months? Thanks. I've been getting this kind of comment over and over and over on my channel and in emails to me asking about my opinion on quality of various RVs. I do plan to make future content about that. I'm going to be making a new video series where I will be reviewing particular RVs and giving you my opinion on how quality the build is based on the kinds of things I see break as an RV technician. So if you have other questions you'd like for me to answer, please leave a comment on this video and I may make a part two. All right, folks, that's all the jawboning about RVs that I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed watching.